All right, welcome to Sunday Night Service, Facebook Live. Hope you're doing well this beautiful, beautiful Mother's Day. Amen. And, uh, man, it's a, it turned into a nice day. This morning I was freezing to death, and uh, now I feel a, a little bit better. And uh, good to see everybody here. Got a full parking lot of folks. Good to see Bobby there. Folks are starting to join. Probably some in the parking lot are joining Facebook Live. And I uh, wanted to share with you some uh, prayer request, and uh, let me get to my prayer request list. Uh, if you're on Facebook, please like and share, uh, like and share the video and uh, the Facebook page. Uh, we are running three, four, five hundred views per service. Amen. The month of April, we had twelve thousand views on Amen. our Facebook page by itself. And uh, we're grateful for those that are uh, tuning in. And uh, I know there's been folks all over the country uh, watching the Facebook page. Hopefully it's been a blessing to folks as we open the Word of God and study the Word of God together. On Wednesday night, we just finished the book of Esther. And uh, what a tremendous book. And we, in a few weeks, will be going uh, and starting a study in the book of Ezra. And uh, before that, I'm going to deal with some topics, I think, that are important for our church family. And um, and this Wednesday night, I'm going to speak on the topic dealing with isolation, dealing with isolation. A lot of folks are dealing with a different world They're I don't know about you. I'm used to being out and about. I'm used to traveling and I'm not traveling and I'm not I haven't been in my office for uh, six, seven weeks now. And it just is a different world. And and uh, we're all spending a lot more time. Grab the flag. We're all spending a lot more time. Uh, in our uh, homes. And so we're going to deal with the subject of dealing with isolation. And so hopefully that'll be a blessing. Um, Some prayer requests to share with you. Continue to pray for Miss Helen in uh, Tennessee. Pray for her health and her cancer diagnosis. Pray the Lord to help her with that. Uh, Of course, Brother Donnie as well. Uh, Alan Sebring lost his hearing in his right ear. So pray that uh, that hearing will be restored. I know that he's taking some medications to try to help with that. Uh, Also, Darlene Selmer's father passed away um, yesterday morning, and so pray for the Selmer family. Also, Brother Hilario's father uh, passed away in uh, Mexico, right? He was in in Mexico? El Salvador? I'm not sure, but uh, in their home country, and so do pray uh, for Hilario. Uh, Miss Lily's brothers are doing better, my understanding. Uh, Joel McConkie, 10-year-old boy with bone cancer, has been in and out of the hospital uh, and probably in the midst and very close to having surgery on his leg uh, to remove um, the cancer there. And so pray for him. And uh, I see their videos um, almost every day and their updates. And so I don't know them personally, but it's somebody that we've been praying for. If you had a 10-year-old boy, child, you would want prayer. And so we need to pray for them uh, like they're our own. And so Joel McConkey, my Aunt Louise, pray for her. She's been in and out of the hospital. Miss Jenny's mother, my cousin Betty, uh, Chris Cheris, who's a uh, friend of Joe Crawford's, Thomas's cousin, Montavia's grandma, uh, has the COVID-19 virus. And then uh, Miss Ashley, pray for her recording uh, coming up. And then uh, pray for uh, Juanita Lilly and bro- the Capozzi family uh, as uh, both of them experience the deaths of uh, Brother Pete and Brother Vic Capozzi. Pray for Pastor Leto. Brother Leto was on the prayer call uh, and is on the road to recovery. Mm-hmm. And so continue to pray for their family. Pray for Pastor Casey. Yes. Mention him in prayer and in the sermon this morning. I don't have an update. I don't know what happened this morning. I did see a bit of his YouTube sermon. So he preached this whole sermon. I don't know what happened after that. Uh, but do pray for Brother Casey. Uh, Brother Casey is... Uh, Uh, in Massachusetts, who has experienced, I think, three um, violations uh, for just for having church and uh, and was threatened uh, this Sunday if he had church uh, that he could be uh, they could file criminal charges. And so what a shame, what an absolute shame in America that a governor would be that um, out of touch, uh, given all of the safety protocols that they are doing to try to charge a pastor with having church. So pray for him, pray for the Tykerts as they, uh, Brother Tykert as he's been deployed, and uh, and then the Tykert family as they transition over this next year uh, as uh, they 
kind of live this next year without Brother Tyker being in the home every day. And so pray for them and then pray for our elected leaders. Pray for our president, our vice president, our governor, lieutenant governor, uh, our county and local leaders, uh, mayor and uh, chief of police. And and we're thankful for them. Lord willing, this week we'll take them some lunch, our police force. And so uh, we praise the Lord for that and uh, thankful for uh, the city of Bowie. Our academy students, uh, our seniors finished this week. So I know Marissa and Alana are very excited about that. And uh, she thinks school, she thinks, she thinks school's over, but it just started. And uh, that's what's happening. And uh, welcome to the school of life. And, uh, and so, and, uh, you know, that's what's going to happen. But anyway, uh, plus our college students, some of them have graduated. I know Abigail uh, graduated. Uh, Zach graduated. I think uh, I might be missing a few others. But uh, pray for all our college students taking exams <coughs> and finals and going through all of that into the year, everything online. So a little bit different environment. The whole country is homeschool. Welcome to homeschool, kids. And uh, so they're all dealing with that. And so we're, we're grateful that uh, we have the technology to be able to do that. Our academy is coming up to a few more weeks, and we'll be done uh, for the academic school year. So, Brother Bob, once you come, lead us in a word of prayer. Continue to pray for our missionaries as well uh, in the Dominican, Jeff and Pam, Jim and Becky, uh, and others. And uh, we're thankful for missionaries serving on foreign fields. All right, let's pray, shall we? Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to be here this evening. What a beautiful uh, high 60s evening. It's just a gorgeous night. What a wonderful day for all our mothers on this wonderful uh, Mother's Day. I pray that they had a wonderful day today. We thank you for all our mothers. We just love them and our grandmothers, the ones that just uh, uh, just do so much, Father, that we don't know what we would do without them. So I just pray that you'll bless them, give them uh, just a, a sense of accomplishment for the hard work they do, for all they do for their children. I know Ashley is uh, looking forward to that recording, and she uh, has been wanting to do that for some time, so I pray that uh, uh, that will work out. Again, we pray, as Pastor mentioned, about this dear brother, uh, Casey, in uh, Massachusetts. We pray that, uh, uh, Lord, that uh, he did get his message through. We pray that uh, uh, that no draconian measures will, will be, measures will be against him. We just pray that you'll uh, allow him just to serve you, Father, and uh, allow churches to serve you, Father. What a blessing it is. We are essential, Father. This is our home. This is our home away from home. We pray that you'll just uh, continue to bless, as preacher said, our academy students, our college students, those that are graduating. What a blessing to see that. It's a special time. It's, it's sad right now that uh, they're not going through the ceremonies right now, but there'll be some things a little bit later, so we pray for that situation. Pray for dear Alan, Lord, with his ear, Miss Helen with her situation. Of course, uh, the Lilies and the Capozzi's, and uh, we think of now... Um, uh, Aledio and Darlene Selmer's uh, father, father, both uh, both men passing away uh, just uh, yesterday or the day before. Or so I just pray that you'll be with them and their situation. Just uh, continue to bless them, Father. We pray that you'll again, as preacher said about our elected officials. We pray that you'll uh, be with our president and the vice president and and uh, the different things that uh, they're trying to do to open up the country. We pray that uh, you'll give favor to uh, the, the other governors that seem to be holding back. We pray for our governor that he will open his eyes and see what um, other governors, although he is he's the head of the Governor's Association, I pray that maybe the other governors will influence him as to what they're doing for, especially for the churches. Again, we pray for our nurses, our doctors, our first responders. We pray for our mayor, our county executive. We pray, the Lord, that you'll uh, maybe cancel this H.R. 6666 that Preacher prayed, uh, uh, told us about this morning, that bill in Congress, Father, that would open, uh, they would be able to track everybody who has this COVID-19. And, uh, Lord, we just pray that we don't need that kind of intrusion coming into our homes and following us everywhere we go. Uh, Lord, we've got to be about your business because you may be coming very, very soon. The time may be coming very soon. So I pray that we'll, we'll continue to post things about you, Father. 12,000 people last month hearing the gospel, hearing preacher preach. We just pray that you'll continue to bless that. May the, may the gospel go out through all of this country and throughout all the world, and we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Bob. Let me uh, give you um, some announcements. Bob did mention um, the bill. In fact, when I first heard um, a video yesterday afternoon from a medical 
uh, doctor talking about a House bill um, numbered 6666. Mm, too close. I, um, I said, that's nonsense. That was my first reaction. So I went to the House.gov website mm -hmm. and uh, looked it up myself. And uh, sure enough, May 1st, uh, the Trace Act was um, um, put, um, I guess what they call it, it was um, introduced, introduced with 45 co-sponsors, including uh, our congressman for our church, Congressman Anthony Brown. Oh, I would encourage you to call your congressman and tell them that we don't need a bill that um, uh, intrudes upon our privacy rights Amen. as Americans. That's right. uh, we don't need anybody following us around and telling us uh, or requiring us to take tests or vaccinations or right. this or that. Correct. Uh, and uh, so I would encourage you to do that. H.R. 666 was introduced May the 1st. You can go to the House website. I have a PDF of the bill. It, it uh, appropriates $100 billion, billion. Uh, to hire and train and to provide resources to track every person in the United States that is tested for COVID-19 and to track those that are around them. Don't think that such a database cannot be used for... Uh, measures that are off the charts, well, are and so. The body or the people or no? <laughs> so I don't know. So, um, so I just encourage you to call our congressman. I will be calling Congressman Anthony Brown's office tomorrow morning, uh, sharing my look. A lot of stuff's happening in the fog, and no one's paying attention. We need to pay attention. Amen. Tomorrow night, prayer call. Brother Harding will be lifting up and guiding uh, men in prayer, men and women in prayer. And uh, the mayor of Lubbock, Texas, will be on the prayer call tomorrow. Uh, if you were on the call on Thursday, the call was disrupted uh, by some folks just trying to cause problems. 800 people on the line at the time wow. all over the country. Congressman Louis Gomer had just finished uh, with giving us um, some of his words of wisdom. In fact, uh, he was catching a flight to come to Washington, D.C. to meet with the president on Friday. And uh, we prayed for him and asked God's wisdom, and that's what he asked for, that God would give him wisdom. And I listened to what he said to the president in the public, and uh, tremendous, tremendous, and uh, thankful for that. But tomorrow night we'll be gathering together again in the effort of prayer. Do pray for Brother Harding. He traveled. He was in uh, Tennessee today. He said, man, we had church. We shook hands. We gathered in the building. I said, praise the Lord. That's what it's all about. And uh, isn't it amazing that we would be... Uh, we'd be excited to actually have church in a normal manner. And so join us tomorrow night at 830 Amen. for that prayer call every night, Monday to Saturday. And you never know who may show up to the prayer call. Our ladies have been doing their Thursday night prayer call. I appreciate my wife leading Amen. the effort there on that video Zoom call, prayer call, 7 o'clock. So ladies, join for that. Thank you for all those who have given food. We've got a lot of food to distribute. If you have family or friends or neighbors you feel like could benefit from that, we are planning to try to start move that food out to get them to our bus routes and uh, maybe have Bob take some to Langley Park and be, uh, take some more and take, do some more. Like and uh, we want to do, do that as much as we can. And, uh, and so that'll be a blessing. Uh, let me encourage you to uh, give at wbcbuoy.org uh, both your tithes and offering and missions and uh, be faithful to that. Amen. And, uh, and so let me give you a couple of calendar announcements. Providence Baptist College has a singing group that actually will be in town, uh, Lord willing, on May the 20th. And so um, a week from this Wednesday, and they'll be here and uh, be singing and, uh, and, and having the message there. Um, we moved our academy graduation to June 26th, mm -hmm. and um, I think that's all of the announcements. Got anything? I think we're good, brother. All right, we got a special. Do we have a special? Where's the special? Is our special getting out of the car? All right. We have a special? Yes or no? 
you have a special? Oh, no special. All right. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Samuel. First Samuel, chapter number 17, um, one of the, I think, most well-known stories um, in the Old Testament, for sure. Perhaps even one of the most well-known stories in the Bible. Yes, sir. The story of David yes. and Goliath. And I'm not going to read through the whole story for time's sake. Uh, I know it's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. And uh, hopefully mom's got a good nap. Yeah. And uh, Fed, got fed. And uh, <laughs> all of that. And uh, looking hey, forward. Mom. There you go. <laughs> looking forward to uh, having a restful evening. First Samuel chapter 17. I'm going to begin uh, verse number 11. I'm not going to go through all the descriptions of Goliath. Um, in fact, um, Goliath isn't really um, the focus of the message tonight. Um, really, the focus of the message is David. Uh, Goliaths and giants in our life change. Um, and uh, I'm just going to jump right into the middle of the story. Um, as you know, Goliath would come out and, def and basically challenge uh, the... Uh, Israelite army and the Bible says verse 11 when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines Philistine they were dismayed and greatly afraid now David was the son of that Eph, uh, uh of Bethlehem Judah whose name was whose name was Jesse and he had eight sons and the man went among men for an old man in the days of Saul. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of the three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto him Abinadab, and the third Shammah. So the three oldest sons followed Saul into this battle. This fight between Israel and the Philistines. And the Bible says, verse 14, And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. So giving you a contrast. The oldest three brothers went out to battle. David was the youngest. The Bible says David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Verse 16 and the Philistine drew near morning and, and evening and presented himself 40 days. So for 40 days, Goliath came out with the same challenge with no response. The response from Saul and the army was fear dismay, and likely after many days, some discouragement. And Jesse said unto David, his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn, these ten loaves, and run this to the camp to thy brethren. He didn't say to David, Grab your sling. He didn't say to David, Grab your weapon. He said, grab this meal and take it down to your brothers. Carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how the brethren fare and take their pledge. Jesse uh, was interested in what was happening on the battlefield. Amen. Now, why was Jesse interested on what was happening on the battlefield? I would submit to you he was interested because he had three boys right. down there, and I'm sure he was concerned for their safety. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he went to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. 
For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, here we come, here comes Goliath. Forty days he had come out. Forty days fear. Forty days dismay. Forty days no response. And here he comes again. Here he comes again. Verse 24. Wow. <laughs> Actually, verse 23. Goliath came out, the armies of the Philistines, out of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. He didn't change his speech. He didn't change anything. Had the same armament. Probably had the same spirit about him. He just was coming out again to, to defy the armies of God. And David, this time, heard him. David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were sore afraid. Same response. The men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel as he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. But that's not me. So that's not in there, I know. But you can read between the lines. They were saying, whoever is willing, are you, are you, I'm not the man. Right. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? You see, all of the men... The armies that had heard Goliath for 40 days, all and only their response was fear. Amen. They didn't hear their God being defiled. They didn't hear their God being, uh, um, in essence, put down. But David heard it differently. He saw it as a reproach. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? You see, the armies of, of Israel, David's three brothers, and everyone else that had gathered every day for 40 days, they heard Goliath come out and challenge them, and all they saw was his stature. All they saw was his armament. All they experienced was fear. All that they uh, reacted with was dismay. But when David showed up, he saw it in a completely different way. Exactly. And the people answered him. Verse 27. After this man saying, so shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Eliab, his uh, elder brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. Why was Eliab's anger kindled against David? Because Eliab didn't step up. And wasn't courageous enough to do the right thing. So he was angry because David was showing him up. Right. And he said to David, why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? Don't you got a job to do, boy? Shouldn't you be down there with the sheep? Come on. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. You know the problem with Eliab? Is Eliab had a problem with David. Right. And the truth be told, the truth be told, Jesse, Eliab's father, is the one that wanted to see what was happening in the battle. Correct. And David was obeying his father. Amen. David said those timeless words. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Let's bow for prayer. Father, we love you. We do thank you for this time. We thank you for the beautiful weather. 
that you've given us tonight. Help us as we glean a few truths, a few principles, a few encouraging words, a few challenging words from the Word of God. Bless, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As you read this story and you come across David's question, if you're not careful, you'll be tempted to keep moving on and not ponder really why David asked this question. I believe David asked the question because those who should have been fighting quit fighting. I, I believe David asked this question because God's name and his honor were being challenged. Right. I, I believe David asked this question because those around him we're trying to quiet him and to get him to quit and go back. Across this nation right now, and especially in the Northeast, there are faith-based leaders, pastors, Christians, who should be fighting, but they quit fighting. Come on, brother. They should be in the battle, mm -hmm. but you don't hear anything from them. Uh, look warm. March 23rd, seven weeks ago, our governor deemed the church, he deemed Woodlawn Baptist Church as non-essential. Amen. Agagite. But... I want to say when the church that God established is deemed non-essential, God's name and his honor are belittled. Amen. To call the church non-essential is to say the work of Jesus Christ is non-essential. Come on, preacher. To say the church is not essential is to say the mission of the church is not essential. To insinuate that the church is not essential is to say the Great Commission and Sunday School and the bus ministry are all non essential. Wow. Sad. You could take your family to the park, but you can't go to church. Mm -hmm. right. You could take your kids to Ocean City and walk on the beach or the boardwalk, but you can't take them to Sunday School. You can go to the liquor store and buy a fifth of whiskey or buy your case of Budweiser, but you can't go to the church. You can go to the marijuana dispensary, but you can't go to the church house. You can take your daughter to an abortion clinic and kill her baby, but you can't take her to a youth group meeting. That's the state that we are in. Preach it, preacher. Wow. And I don't know about you, but when I survey the insanity sweeping our state, I can't help but say, is there not a cause? Amen. Amen. Now, on April 20th, just a few weeks ago, I signed a letter with local pastors asking the governor to redesignate the church as essential. Amen. Important. In that letter, we shared what we believe were appropriate and reasonable guidelines to reopen the church, but no answer and no movement. A work group of faith-based leaders convened last week. Right. But by the end of the week, recommendations like no congregational singing be made were made to the governor. Group singing 10 feet apart with mask was the recommendations being talked about. And I don't know what ultimately happened, but those were, the, were what were being told. Sad. Further, the Department of Education determining when we can start our children's ministries at Woodlawn Baptist Church. Let, let me say it loud and clear. I will never consult the Department of Education 
as it relates to the Sunday school and children's ministries of Woodlawn Baptist Church. Amen. Last Saturday, a lawsuit was filed by Delegate Daniel Cox. Amen. Pastor C and others were plaintiffs challenging the governor's constitutional authority. This case should see a ruling this week, and we need to be praying for that. What more needs to be done? Our leaders have overstepped their boundaries. Yes, our governor, have. look, our governor yes. is not the bishop of the churches of Maryland. He serves the people. Yes. The cause that we are fighting for is greater than a virus. It's bigger than 2020. It's more important than this generation. What is done in the next weeks and months will affect the future of this nation. So I say like David, is there not a cause? Amen. This morning I preached on liberty. Yes. Liberty's at stake. Yes, it is. Many don't care. Many will say, oh, it's just a few more weeks. It's a few more months. It's okay. Not if H.R. 6666 goes through. Uh -huh. Not if you, phase two of the reopening plan at the end of the summer oh. finally unfolds. There's a cause greater at stake. When David said, is there not a cause, he was challenging his brothers and everyone that was listening that there was something greater than him at stake. That's right. In our day, what, what are those causes that are greater than us? I would say, number one, the cause is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm thankful this very week there have been people in our church that have led others to Christ. Amen. Because ultimately, that's what it's all about. Right. Look, the, the majority of the work, while we are battling, while we are uh, fighting, if you will, uh, for the right, in essence, to be returned, to be able to assemble in the church house, we ultimately need to recognize that the majority of the work of the church is done outside of the grounds of Woodlawn Baptist Church. Amen. It's done in our workplaces, in our uh, areas where we go to the grocery store, when we deal with people on social media, when we are dealing with family member, the, the gospel the cause is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And I believe David, when he looked at Goliath, he did not see how big that giant was. He saw how big as God was. Amen. And he recognized that there was a cause greater than himself. And he was willing to stand. And I wonder in our day, are we willing to stand? Are we going to be shunned to the corner? Are we going to be told to be quiet? Are we going to be said that we're irrelevant? Are we going to be told that it's not important? But I believe that the church is essential to the community. Amen. The cause Very. is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Exactly. If we don't stand, oh, Lord. Help us. we may not run buses for years. Lord. Lord, help us. If we don't stand, we may not be able to congregate in a building for years. I went on a bit of a rant yesterday as I stood, uh, sat outside of Walmart and had just gone in. 70 people deep. I stood in line for 25 minutes waiting to get into Walmart. And it was packed with people. And we were told, we were told these are essential businesses to be able to buy groceries and all of that. And I, look, I don't, I, I don't begrudge Walmart for doing what they're supposed to do. Sure. Open. But I will tell you, Bob, I, I, I watched dozens of people in line all around me. And I didn't see any groceries being bought. What? I saw flat screen TVs and oh. I saw uh, um, I saw clothing and I, you can make arguments and all that. I'm not. And look, hey, listen, go for it. But don't lie to us. Come on. Come on. Don't tell us one thing and do another. Don't tell me that alcohol is essential 
And the church isn't essential. Disgusting. Right. Listen, the cause is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Number two, the cause is the truth that we stand for. Yes. You know, the truth of the matter is that if if Eliab or his or David's other brothers or some other army uh, a soldier would have stood up and depended upon God, they would have been victorious just like David was. Come on, brother. David didn't kill Goliath with a stone. David killed Goliath with the power of God. Amen. David killed Goliath because he had God's presence. David killed Goliath because he was dependent upon God. Yes. He didn't do it in his own strength or his own ability. Hey, listen, you will never lead someone to Christ in your own talent and your ability to be able to debate. You will lead someone to Christ because the Holy Spirit of God reached down into that heart and stirred somebody and brought them to the recognition of their need for Christ. Hey, listen, the cause is the truth that we stand for. This book right here is worth fighting for. Amen. The truth that we stand for is worth fighting for. Is there not a cause, Woodlawn Baptist Church? Yes, there is, preacher. Preach it. The cause is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, and uh, as uh, you continue and look, what was their response? As David said, is there not a cause? He turned from, uh, the Bible says, verse 30, he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people answered again, after the former matter, former matter, you know what, you know what I see in David? David didn't just say, is there not a cause to one? He ran around and said, guys, is there not a cause? Hey guys, is there not a cause? Hey, hey guys over there, is there not a cause? What was he doing? He was rallying the troops and saying, guys, it's time to get the battle. Amen. It wasn't a one, is there not a cause? I, I believe he kept repeating himself. But their response was the same. Fear. Yes, sir, brother. I, I, I'm afraid. I'm dismayed. You know what? Dismay is, is to, the, to the point of, I, I give up. I, I can't do it. I'm not able to. Hey, listen. We've never been able to do the work of God on our own. Amen. It's never been about us. No. The work of God is bigger than us. Yeah. And I believe David, as he showed up, I don't think David was looking for a fight. I think David was after obeying his father. Yes, sir. And sometimes when you're obeying your father, a fight shows up. That's right. And we need to be ready right. to stand for the truth. That's right. Now. Yeah. Not later. That's right. Stand for the truth. Amen. Is there not a cause? The last cause I want to talk about, and I want to reiterate what we talked about this morning, and that is the cause of freedom. We have the freedom of speech in America. Yes, we do. Amen. That's what this flag stands for. Amen. It stands for freedom. Amen. It does. This flag, this flag stands for the freedom that we have Amen. in the gospel of Jesus Christ, Amen. and because men and women have died. Yes. To, to, to provide the way to be able to allow us to stand up and say, Thus saith the Lord. Amen. Yes. I don't have to ask permission no. to get up and say what this book says. No. Right. no. Hey, listen, you can disagree with me. That's the greatness of America. Mm -hmm. right. But we have freedom. Amen. We have freedom. That's what this flag stands for. It stands for freedom. Amen. The cause of freedom. And I believe David was saying to those, those men, you are free. Yes. Because he set you free. Yes, he did. Glory to God. Aren't you glad for the gospel of Jesus Glory Christ? Amen. I've been set free yes. by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. One day I'm going to heaven. That's right. I'm not. Look, I don't want to get the COVID-19 coronavirus or whatever you want to call it. But I will tell you this. I'm not afraid to go to heaven. Amen. Because my name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Glory to God. That can't be removed. No, cannot. Amen. No erasers. That's right, Bob. There's no erasers There's no in heaven. Erasers in <laughs> I knew I had Bob there for a reason. <laughs> Amen. Praise God for the gospel. Praise God for freedom. Okay. 
The cause of freedom is worth fighting for. I, I don't want to see in our day, in this generation, for us to give away everything our forefathers fought for. I don't want to have to ask permission of the state of Maryland whether we can have Sunday school. I don't want to ask a governor or a county executive or some health official if I can run a bus. That's right. If the metro buses are running, those buses are going to run. If the county is running and having group meetings, we're having Sunday school. Is there not a cause? David, David got with it. David was willing to fight. Sadly, nobody joined him. Except for God. Yeah, man. <laughs> Glory to God. I think Eliab and the brothers were still angry as David came back. Because he showed them up. Look, when this crisis passes, there'll be controversy. Right. There's controversy. Mm -hmm. I recognize that there is no good answer. That no matter what you do, you're going to be criticized. Sure. You can keep the church closed till Jesus comes and somebody's going to, somebody's going to criticize you. Yeah, that's right. You can open up right now and there'll be people to criticize you. By the way, I also recognize fairly, being very fair, that no matter what the governor does now, he's going to be criticized. Right. So you know what I say? Open. Amen. Get your mask. Get your gloves. If you're afraid, stay home. If you're sick, stay home. If you're older and you're, you're concerned, you should stay home. But if you're Americans, you ought to be able to go out. Amen. That's the cause of freedom. You say you keep preaching on this topic. Why? Because this topic, this issue is, 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 is completely enveloping everything we're doing. Exactly. It's a key. The cause. Is there not a cause, David said? The cause is what his causes are. Amen. The cause is the truth. Yes. Don't be afraid to stand for truth. Never. I'll just tell you that somebody lies about Woodlawn Baptist Church, I'm going to stand up against them. That's right. You try to false you try to spread falsehoods about the people of this church, I'm going to stand against you. Amen. The cause is freedom. We need to be, we need to be loud and, and let everybody know that we stand for freedom. Amen. We stand for freedom. Right. We stand for freedom. Because we don't see the giant in Goliath. We see our God who is greater than any of the giants. Let's bow for prayer and we'll dismiss. Father, we are grateful and thankful for the word of God. We thank, we thank you that you have been good to us. You're good on the mountaintop and in the valleys. God, I know amongst our congregation there are, be, there are people that are concerned and they, I understand. I know there are people that have lost their jobs. I know there are people trying to figure out what they're going to do the, at the end of the month and, yeah. and, and what are they going to do in the future because they've lost their job or been furloughed. And God, I pray you provide a way. I pray, I pray that you would supply their needs. And Lord, I pray, I do pray earnestly that you will touch our leaders and I pray that they will do the right thing. Amen. God, I pray right now that you would take this virus and you will shut it down. Please, Father. I know you're able to do that. Oh, very easily. God, I pray you touch every Marylander, every American, every person yeah. that has this virus. I pray that their bodies will respond to the treatments yeah. that are being given to them. God, I pray you touch the, the, the bodies of those being affected. Yes. And God, I pray for wisdom for our ministry. Yes. I pray for direction. Yes. I pray for souls to be saved. Yes. I pray that we would, uh, that, that our testimony would stand strong on the truth of the gospel, 
on the truth found in the Word of God, that we would not not tremble, but that we would have courage and that we would have faith to trust you. God, I pray you give your, give your blessings to your people as we go uh, this evening. Give us a wonderful uh, week. I pray that Wednesday night as we open the Scripture and consider uh, the, the uh, dealing with isolation, I pray it be a blessing to our folks. Bless, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, we are on Facebook Live. Got 50 plus folks here. Amen. I don't know who all is here. Amen. Good, Say who, good who's crowd. here. Good crowd tonight, brother. Praise the Lord. All right. Francisca, good to see you. Amen. Miss Jenny, thank you. We stand for freedom. Yep. I agree. Who else is on? Who else is on? Hey, come over here and say hi to your brother. Happy More boys. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Ollie. I love you. What's up, Ollie? Ollie, 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 Ollie. All right. Bye. What's up, Amy? West Virginia, Amy. Mom and dad are here. Sorry. Joe and Vicky here. Brother John, good to see you. Sure. Debbie, thank you. Luis, thank you. Like and share the like and share the service. Like and share the service. Thank you, Luis. Who else is here? Who else is here? Thank you, brother Mike. Lost my voice. Anyone else? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say goodbye a little early. You know why? I'm gonna take my my wife and I are getting some uh, Mother's Day dinner to go. And so, Kiara, what's up, Kiara? Bobby, what's happening? Brother John, taking some. Notes. What's up, Katie? Yasid, thank you, sir. Thank you. Donna and Jim, good to see you. Miss Mary, I forgot to mention, I heard your brother has the virus. Praying for him. Thank you, Miss Jenny. Miss Jenny. Hey, 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 don't break anything. He's got to work Tuesday. Miss Delmy. Brother Allen. Like and share. Like and share. Like and share. Like and share the post. Thank you for all those likes. Brother Allen, keep us updated on your hearing. Can you get me a cheeseburger? No, I don't think so. Virginia, Virginia is now um, May 15th, allowing 50% capacity in churches. I'm praying that the governor of Maryland will do that. On chairs in the back of the truck for next Sunday. Yeah. Unless it's raining. Good idea. I think it's supposed to warm up this week. I know you want a cheeseburger, Amanda. You always want a cheeseburger. Always want a cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Angela wants a cheeseburger, too. All these people want cheeseburgers. It's PCP, Sean. Yes, David, I uh, already watched part of, uh, already watched Brother Casey's message from Adam Square. It's a good message. Talk to Brother Casey on Tuesday. Pray for him. Good man, good friend. Pray for him. Pray for Nick White as well up in Massachusetts. Um, pray for New Jersey. New Jersey's battling some, uh, their governor too. Amanda's birthday is Wednesday. Don't forget that. Amanda's birthday is this Wednesday.
All right. Yep, we're praying for you, Brother Allen. All right, guys, we're going to let you go. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday night.